just found out that this movie is a little racist. Cause what? See, I didn't do Hola, bienvenidos. If you are new here, my name is Daji Imar. I'm your new favorite solo traveler channel on YouTube. I already made the decision for you, boo. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. So I am going to be reviewing three Spanish films. If you can tell by this channel, this is about travel, it's about languages, it's about experience. So one of the languages I'm learning is Espanol and one of the best ways to do that is to watch Spanish films uh, to, you know, learn a little bit more about the language, learn about the culture, learn about the different accents and the mannerisms and body languages of these different uh, people from these different places around the world. So I picked three Spanish films that looks very interesting. And I'm going to do my review on them and talk about how, basically, what I've learned from them, like I just said, and what I picked up, the Spanish I did pick up. So, let's let's get to that. I haven't decided what movie I want to watch. I have kind of an idea. I kind of went through, like, Google and YouTube and was like, what's some of the best movies to, like, learn Spanish with? So, we're going we gonna to decide. Let's go get into it, okay? So, let's see what we got in the international movies. Okay, so I think I'm choosing A Remarkable Tale. It's a comedy. I always watch thrillers when I watch international films, whether that be Spanish or whatever. So, it looked like it's some Afro-Latinas in here. So, we're going to get into this. I don't know. I'm going to look it up and see where this is, like, located. Like, what Spanish-speaking country this comes from. But it's a comedy. So, let's get into it. Um, I just found out that this movie is a little racist. Because what? See, I didn't do a good job at reading the damn whatchamacallit because they talk about black people coming let me go get my shot all right y'all i had to postpone the movie and come back today because i got exhausted so all i can remember as far as spanish the notes that i took de abierto which is like open day in mierto no de abierto or de abiertas de abierta is open day in mierto is Mierdo is okay. So as y'all saw, Lo Nunca Vista had me freaking bam. It ended up being this really kind of like racist, insensitive film. And what I learned from that was like, this is where Spain is. Like, they could release a movie like this in 2019 and it'd be okay. Like, what the hell? Like, what was the point in that? I didn't really understand why in today's climate something like that would be accessible like why would something like that be acceptable in this climate they were very stereotypical the africans um which i turned turned out to be spanish um in real life they were doing like dance moves that were freaking african-american like he, the, the black guy looked like he was doing like michael jackson moves if they're from Africa, from some random village in Africa, why would they be doing African-American dances? And then I didn't appreciate that if they're all from the same tribe, you know, the same tribe or whatever in Africa, why was the girl, the biracial looking one, and all of the men looked exactly the same, like they were from the same place? Like, that's that type of racism and colorism I cannot fuck with. Like, women, to be beautiful, a beautiful black woman, you have to be biracial. But men could be dark skinned, masculine, you know, they could all look like that. So that was irritating. Um, one thing that's, you know, spoke out to me that I could remember from the film as far as Spanish is at the beginning where they had all of those signs everywhere. So um, where they had like uh, Fuentarera de Arriba, which was the name of the town. They had uh, the different signs that were stating that there was open home. Let me, write, let me get my notes out. Let me get my notes out. Because, boo. So they, they were like showing different signs around the town. So like Se Vende, which is for sales. Um, they had another sign that said um, De Abierto, which is open day. Um, and I, th I think it had something else to it. So it didn't directly change to that. But that was kind of what that meant. Um, so that was another word that I remember. They have another one that was for it. It's like Alquio Casa or something like that. And I feel like this is not like... This is the, the reason why I enjoy watching Spanish films to learn languages because these are not words you would think to learn when you are learning a language. Like, let me understand what the signs say if I was driving or walking around a neighborhood. Like, you don't, you only think about conversations you would have. 
But if I was to be moving to a Spanish speaking country or a Spanish speaking town in the United States and they had these signs up, I wouldn't learn that. So it was, it was easy, I mean it was cool to get that perspective like I wouldn't go out of my way to learn signs in a neighborhood. Like that's not something I other probably didn't like a stop sign or something like that, you know? Um, so I appreciated that. That's kind of like the Spanish that I uh, felt like I was going to take with me, like that I was able to retain. And also I learned how to cuss. I learned mierto. Okay, that's my favorite word to use now. Like I've seen mierto, mierto, mierto drops up mierto. My dog chew up sub mierto. Like that's my favorite word now. Like let's get into it. But overall what I learned is where they are politically in the Spanish climate. I mean, clearly I can't speak for the entire country, but for something like that to be acceptable in 2019 to release um, was just ridiculous to me. Um, and it just kind of shows, well, they, this is what y'all think about black people, this is what y'all think about Africans, that's not cute. Anyway, moving on to the next film, child. Let's get into that. Next one, this was my favorite one. I chose this one because it's like, this was like so perfect for me to watch a, a, a movie like this because I am in this industry. I work for our app. I am in marketing. The climate, we are all on apps. We are all, this is like something that we all are into right now. So I'm like, let me watch a film that uses the verbiage that we use on a daily basis. Talking about marketing, talking about social media and things of that nature. So this was a film about like two guys who got high one night from a, some pills they got from a party and created this fake app that really didn't exist and it got all this crowdfunding and it kind of unwinds. One of the guys isn't really passionate about it, one of them really is and they're letting the fame get to their head. And it's just really funny to watch. Um, but mostly because it's like, that's like the world we live in. Like I feel like when I often watch Spanish films, it's not necessarily related to like what's going, like what's really going on right now. It's kind of like a story or something very old. So like to watch something that I would watch and if it was an American English film was pretty cool. Um, so I learned a lot from this movie, so we got a big old list. So let's get to it and why I was able to retain these words and specific phrases. So numero uno, what is uh, preciso, preciso, which is gorgeous. So in the beginning of the film, uh, they were at like a workout class and the instructor was like being like really encouraging, like preciso, preciso, like talking to the girls. Um, okay, another one that stuck with me is going to be el cafe del dia, which is the coffee of the day. Because when you travel a lot um, and you go out to eat breakfast, there's usually el, como se dice, drink in Espanol. Uh, bebida, el bebida del dia. I think that's the correct way to say that. Um, so there's always like a drink of the day. So now I know if there's coffee of the day, I know what to look out for. Because I'm like, oh, I watched it in bankroll, bitch. Eh. The one was who get this, which is toys. Because one of the little kids, there was like a kid on there. He was like a influencer, like a YouTuber. And that stuck with me because jugar in Espanol is to play, if I'm correct. And I was like, okay, that makes sense why a toy would be this and jugar is to play. Like, I kind of got that. That kind of reminds me of that so I can remember how toys, not that I would, well, I might use toys because I have a dog. And I can say, you know, your juguetes, get your juguetes, get your juguetes up, what are you doing? But that made me mem remember who God. So I'm like, okay, I can remember who get this. So that's the word I'm going to definitely, you know, be able to retain much easier if I see it somewhere, or if I'm in a store and it says who get this. I'm like, oh, that's toys. I know, I know, I know what's up. Okay, so there was a drinking scene and they were saying chupa, which is slang for like drink. Like you know, in English when we say chug, 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 or shots they were saying chupar so if i'm out the club somewhere but and i heard this is like mexican slang this isn't like slang for like the entire um spanish language it's just more of like a mexican dialect so they were saying say chupar chupar when somebody was drinking chupar not chupar not sound like American. so i'm like oh if i'm up in mexico and we taking shots i'm like chupar chupar like i got you. I, I, I know what's up i know what y'all talking about i know what y'all saying like i got you. We here, we see each other. Okay, we see each other. Another one they said, um, this was during like one of the scenes where they were at the agency, and they said, Eres muy cre creativa, which is you are very creative. I am a creative, I use this terminology because I work in marketing. So I'm like, I love learning phrases that have to do with like my occupation because it's like, 
I might be, it might be a situation where I want to be a digital nomad or work for an international agency that, you know, is immersed in Spanish culture. So I know some of the Spanish terms in marketing. Like, usually when you think about learning a, uh, a language, you think about just conversational. But like, like I said with the first movie, like, I never thought to learn about signs I see in neighborhoods. So here, I never thought about to learn the terminology of the occupation I had. So creativo or creativa in Espanol is creative, you know. Um, so that's something I learned. I also learned how to say uh, mercadillo, mercadillo, which is marketing in Spanish. So I'm a mar I work in marketing. So this is another really great, you know, word to understand. And another one was um, that they said at, like toward the end of the movie where they were getting someone's attention to come to them. Or aquí, por favor, which was over here, please. I know aquí, I know por favor. So I felt like this was cool to understand how to tell, like, get somebody's attention and tell them to come over here. So por aquí is come over here or right here, you know? So I'm excited about these new words that I learned because I feel like I'm going to be using these all the time. Like, this is something like, okay, this was relevant to retain, like, for real, for real. So yeah, it, it's just... I just really appreciate movies that are relevant because it's like I can use these words, this information. It's easier to retain when it's something you relate to. So that's kind of something I also look for in movies. Okay? Alright, let's move on to the third movie, the last movie. This one was a bit crazy. This was a lot of murder, kidnapping, um, all type of shit like that. So this one is called The Silence of the Marsh. Um, this is a like a thriller film, I guess you would put it in that category. This was kind of like somebody got a taste of their own medicine. I, what really drew me to this is the character, the actors, um, he was he played Berlin in Money Heist and he's gonna have a freaking spin-off. He was my favorite character in Money Heist. He his acting was freaking phenomenal. But basically he was like a crime novelist and committed a crime and then somebody got back at him. It was just crazy. But um, I picked up on a, a few words from here, but more so I love to watch Spanish films because I plan on visiting a lot of Spanish uh cities and their accent is just so distinct and so different from various different like spanish speaking countries like they don't pronounce their s's their s's spells like th's like spanish they do, like they was probably they would say like espanol es, espanol or something like that like it's just so different and it's very much harder to understand but i feel like my favorite spanish films and tv shows that i graduate to or Spanish versus like any other Spanish speaking country. So I learned a couple of words that were kind of irrelevant to the plot. It was like a scene when they were at the freaking uh, like a coffee shop or something. And I learned gargame, gargame, which is charge me. I learned tu pagas, which is you pay, like you pay, like telling somebody you pay. No, you pay. And then one thing that spoke out to me so in Espanol, um, Ia is your da is daughter, but in in this show, in this movie, he was asking about someone's daughter, like, and he said, but he said tu niña, which is child in Spanish. So I wonder if you kind of use those words interchangeably when you are talking. Like, if I was to say my daughter, I would say uh, yo niña, versus if I was saying somebody else. I mean yo ni yo fuck. Let me get my words right. I would say yo hija, ia, yo ia. I hope I'm saying that word right. If not, oh well, I'll learn how to say it correctly. This is the part of this whole thing. Um, or tu niña, if I was saying to somebody else. But like, I guess niña and ia is interchangeable when you're talking about that. Um, but that literally stuck out to him. Like, why didn't he say that? Like, why didn't he say niña if he was talking about somebody's daughter? And it wasn't like he said child, he said their daughter. So. I, I don't know. Maybe that's a Spanish um, dialect. That's part of like Spaniard dialect with Spanish. Maybe in Mexico they would say the other word. And then uh, that's about it that I learned from that one. That was really like something I feel like, okay, this is something I'm learning and I'm going to be able to retain. Like I'll be able to, you know, as far as paying for things and restaurants or shopping, those are cargame uh, and tubagas are words I should know. Um, and I'm learning about like family verbiage, like different family member names. So that's why like the Nina and Ia kind of pointed out to me, like 
stuck with me. Um, but I really like that movie for the plot. Like, I wasn't really trying to focus on learning Spanish first. I'm like, this is some good-ass movie with some good-ass acting in it. But it was good because, like I said, I need to get familiar with that Spanish uh, accent because I want to visit a lot of Spanish, a lot of cities in Spain. So I hope this was fun. I hope this is entertaining. If you are also like me and you're trying to learn Spanish, try to find movies that relate to you, that you will really enjoy, that it will be easy to retain instead of like, oh, let me just watch a random movie in a, in a language. Like, like I said, as you guys can see, I retain the most words and verbiage and uh, from a movie that was relate relatable to me. I was working in I work in marketing. They're talking about social media. I'm in social media. Like they're talking about things of that nature. So it was easier for me to retain that. So I'm like, I'm interested in this movie, but I'm also really understanding what they're talking about because I'm like, oh, that's me. Like I need to know that word. I might want to, you know, get into international marketing or something like that. But anyway, this was really fun. Um, I can't wait to do, you know, see what other movies I end up watching this month. Um, we're gonna see. Okay.